December 27, Frederick Brotherton Meyer. Men who need a new beginning need a friend to help them find it. The local pastor, Frederick Meyer, shrugged into his coat and watched the released prisoners saunter from the jailhouse across the street and right into the local pub. A heavy mist hung over the town, just like the cold haze of liquor hung over these men's ruined lives. He knew too much drink was at the root of a lot of crime, and it was clear to Frederick that the men walked out the front door of the prison and right into the back door of the pub. What if someone offered a smile, took them to breakfast instead of a pub, and extended friendship? Could those first few moments of freedom become a new beginning? Frederick got permission to greet the newly released prisoners each morning. One day, Frederick noticed an especially ragged man in the line of prisoners waiting to be released. The tear in his pants was barely held together by wide cross stitches. If it had been raining, his boots would have taken in water at the toe and let it out in the heel. The man looked dejected, miserable, like a tramp. Frederick offered him breakfast at the coffee house. The beaten down man was sullen, but he accepted the offer of a meal. Then, after a bit of hot food and no preachy attack from Frederick, the man began to talk. He told Frederick he'd once been a respectable worker, but after a difficult time in the army, he had started drinking, heavily. The man was still young, and Frederick longed to see him grab hold of a new beginning. Convinced that if men could stop drinking, they could get back on their feet, Frederick carried pledge cards in his pocket. He often asked struggling men to sign a card promising not to touch liquor again. Sober from his time in jail, the man signed. Frederick helped him get lodging in a clean, respectable place, away from his old companions. He helped him find work, brought him acceptable clothes, and visited him. One day, he asked the man if he had family. He didn't. Frederick pressed, was there really no one who cared for him or that he cared for? The man hesitated. There was a girl, but she wouldn't be likely to look at me now, he said. You never know, said Frederick. These women are wonderful creatures. I've known them to stick to a man when he has lost all self-respect. There's no accounting for a woman's love. Hope came into the man's eyes, and Frederick had an idea. He offered to ask the woman if she would reopen the friendship, and the man agreed. Frederick left in good spirits. Human love was so often a revelation of God's love. If he could help the man believe someone cared for him, then his friend would have a reason to rise up and be worthy of that love. Frederick found the woman, and when he explained his errand, there was a look on her face that said it all. She had hoped the relationship could be saved. Frederick rushed to his friend and shared the good news. Sometime later, Frederick saw the couple together, strolling arm in arm in a nearby park. He slipped away so he wouldn't intrude upon their newfound joy. Twelve months later, the two were married. Frederick Meyer was a modern-day Good Samaritan like the one found in Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. In that passage, in response to the question, who is my neighbor, Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Well, the expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise.
Is there a new beginning you can invite a friend into? Or maybe you can be a friend for someone as he fights for a new beginning. Men who need a new beginning need a friend to help them find it. Hello, my name is George Morrison. I pastored in the Denver metro area for some 40 years. And now we have a ministry called Truth and Life Ministries where we travel teaching on leadership both here and abroad. Our story today is about a gentleman named Frederick Meyer. Frederick was a prolific writer. And yet, you would think that would keep him busy. But he still had time to reach out to one. He was uh, witnessing the release of some prisoners and he noticed one particular gentleman who he approached and uh, he began to talk to him. He took him out for a meal and he allowed the man to share with him his story. And in that uh, sharing back and forth, this gentleman found hope because one person reached out to him he found hope for his life. And as a result, he was changed. He met a girl that he once knew in the past, ended up marrying her and to live a life that was successful. But the point and the challenge today is, in the busyness of all of our schedules, do we have time to reach out to that one do we have time to be the good Samaritan who finds someone laying alongside of the road where everyone else ignores and doesn't give the time of day? But would you be willing to reach out to that one? I want you to think about that. Think about this story. Think about this man who was busy, just like each and every one of us, but he took time. So my challenge to you today is take time. Find that one that you can take in, that you can share with, that you can put hope into their life and see that life change for the good. God bless you and have a wonderful day.